All right, Mr. Petru. Hey, we're back at it again for another episode of the new show. And look, um, before I get into the topics that hurt the most, um, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that, um, so we're mass communicating. Um, we are now, this is all, this is now going to be, um, or is going to be a podcast on Spotify and Apple, uh, right now. So, um, so yeah, so I just started that, got it all hooked up. Um, so we're going to reach millions, millions of D3 fans across the world and we're gunning for Joe Rogan. So, um, I don't know, my salary is going to have to go up. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, like there's there's percentages we're talking here now. This is like percentage right. ownership in the show. Um, so to begin with, before we get into the um, what we want to talk about in terms of automatic bids and all that kind of in the pool C and all that kind of stuff, I I do have to ask. Yesterday, Kenyon lost to Ohio Wesleyan. And I will just say, I know this might hurt, but Ohio Wesleyan basically culminated probably one of the best seasonal turnarounds that I've ever witnessed, right? Like they were 04 and 2, 04 and 3, whatever it was. And then just won yeah. everything, including the NCAC tournament final, beating your beloved lords i excuse me owls um two one so I, i'm just i'm just gonna ask because you know mental health and all that stuff we talk about nowadays and you being a i like are you okay like do are you are you okay <laughs> oh my goodness um... i told you i i had some things to say before i got to the painful stuff and this is obvious obviously the painful Right. Well, I don't know whether to, uh, that actually sort of segues into one of my topics I've been wanting to talk about. So I don't know if you want me to talk Roll about with it, it or it. not. Roll or, with it, brother. Or Roll or... with it. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, I didn't even catch that result yesterday. So, oh, we yes. won. Oh, my gosh. You didn't know? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was a weird. Even before Kenyon scored in the first half to go ahead, I had like, I mean, I had a bad, I have a bad feeling all the time. <laughs> I, if I even hear the letters, oh, woo, or, um, it's very traumatizing. And Kenyon, Kenyon could win 20 games in a row, and I'd still think they were going to lose the next 10. Like, I'd be <laughs> convinced of it. Um, and that Jay Martin is like, so, I mean, who would have ever expected, possession oriented owo to do a kickoff to try to score in the yep. wind and you know i kenyan worked so hard to get that 1-0 lead and then within 15 seconds yeah. they give it up and it was just you know that's the kind of stuff as a fan that is just like a dagger like you've got to be yeah. kidding me um and, you know, I, that's where I go crazy about, like, is it the coach? I mean, like, how? Anyway, I have tons of thoughts about it and about Kenyon and them feeling way, way. I think the coach feels too much pressure. Like, they need to, um, they need to adjust their approach a little bit and just have fun and just go for it. But they got to stay. They're doing too much trash talking and, like, um, you know, they just got to go play and not and focus on the details and not make mistakes. But so the thing I wanted to talk about for weeks now, and I wasn't quite sure how to do it, is uh, one of my favorite top topics is narcissism, which I think <laughs> is like one of the themes of our yeah, culture. Oh, totally. Um, Look at us. <laughs> right. Um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I like to start my little narcissism talk with um, 
you know, what I often hear a lot is, oh, honey, you're not narcissistic. You're just self-absorbed. <laughs> That's a good one. I got to remember. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, I think one of the things people, you know, people usually just react negatively to hearing that word. But narcissism to me is is a lot like anything else that we have, like potassium or white blood cell, like Everybody has a certain amount of yeah. narcissism, and it's like a continuum. Yeah. And all of us are trying to achieve or stay at a kind of a narcissistic equilibrium. And, you know, all of us are vulnerable in different ways and to different degrees about how much, uh, you know, a little narcissistic wound or a yeah. little slight here or there will, like, impact us. Um, you know, you see this all the time on the boards, like, you know, people defending their teams and trying to figure out some way that their team can still get in, even though the numbers don't work or, or so-and-so beat your team, but why they're really not better than your team. And, um, you know, and then it just go, you know, and then people are like greedy. I mean, like, you know, your team can win the national championship and then the fan wants, the team to win all the awards yeah. too and win player of the year. Like there's never, you know, and that's one of the things about narcissism when it's more malignant is that, you know, you can't feed it enough. It's like a bottomless pit. So that's more of the pathological narcissism, but narciss you know, narcissism in general is something very, very normal. And it does come into play very frequently in these, you know, as a fan and like professional sports, you know, like when the Celtics lost to the, who did they lose? Oh, Golden State. And, you know, like for some, like that personally hurt me. And that's like, that's like insane. <laughs> like, like, am I really less of a person when Kenyon gets knocked out in the sweet 16? Um, but the way, you know, it's, you know, people wave their flag in their front yard of their team. I mean, it's just crazy. So I just wanted to give a nod to, I think we all live in that bubble. Um, so, yeah, that's my reaction to Kenyon losing yesterday. Well, and like I said, before we started recording, your reaction too led you to remove all of the Kenyon gear from your YouTube studio. So um, I totally get it. I, I will say, you're right. I, I Everyone has a degree of of narcissistic tendencies, like to one degree or another, some are like off the charts, some are, but what we don't talk about, and I think it's probably high time we start talking about it, especially in the game of soccer, and especially, you know, as it relates to Kenyon is perhaps humility, right? Because I think it's humility that ends up driving people to strive for better whereas i think narcissism already places you at a level um at a higher level than others right like and i think when you're humble and why all, all soccer you would listen to them oh i just you know i get to work um they try to be as humble as they can um and, and i and i think right. that's an important attribute that i don't think people talk about enough and I'm no psychologist. Yeah, and I, and I think the whole psychology of how teams approach, you know, is is really, really important. Like, there's teams that think, oh, I think we have a chance to beat mm -hmm. them. Or if we play really well, we can beat them. Or I think maybe what's worse is, like, a feeling of we yeah. have to beat them or we yeah. must win or else, or else mm -hmm. everything – you know, is going to cave in around us. And I, there's a right balance between, you know, being very, very confident, but also totally respecting yep. your opponent and, you know, just giving it all you got and then letting it fall where it falls. I, I will say, and I don't know if it plays into it, but I, I, you know, maybe this is why, I mean, there have been some games I've been impressed with, um, your team right with Kenyon but that's a good point like I I wonder how much pressure that they put themselves under 
based on last year and thinking like, well, if we just tweak this, that, and the other, we're going to beat everybody. And they looked, there are times that they just didn't look impressive in, in the league, you know, like just not that you would, not something that I expected out of them because they have such quality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's, it's actually more than just, it's a 10 year pressure. And I think, you know, coach Brown has done a great job is like, you know, people have described him as obsessed with winning a national title and they've been so close to the final four a couple of times. And, you know, each time, like when you lose in the Sweet 16 in PKs or a ball rolls under your foot in the 89th mm-hmm. minute to lose this Elite Eight game or, you know, it starts building up. And, um, and and the team, I think, definitely, you know, all these fifth-year seniors, I mean, they're not the only team that has a bunch of yeah. fifth-year seniors who came back to yeah. try to win a title. Um, so you're not entitled to anything, but you got to figure out a way to just, you know, I don't know. It's, um, but yeah, I think, you know, Kenyon is probably, I I don't want to say this because it's another jinx thing for me, but um, I don't think there's another team. There's a couple others close like F&M and, you know, um, I don't know. There's a couple others, but Kenyon is probably the best program that hasn't made the final Mm -hmm. four in the last Mm -hmm. eight years. Um, So, yeah, I, I think that how to deal with that pressure is, you know, something they really need to there figure is, out. That's true. I, and you probably know better, right? There is probably a psychology to that. Like, look, every time we've gotten close, we've something has happened, right? Like, again, yesterday, perfect example, right. go ahead goal. And then they, oh, takes the ball, right? And launches it. And you're like, what are they doing? Tip for the corner. And then. And then they level, right? Like, or yeah, I, I don't think Owu had more than chances. three or four chances yeah. the whole game, and they like, you know, one felt very, very fluky off yeah. that kickoff, and then anyway. Um, so I mean, I think you know, I think they the other you know thing is that they're maybe just not quite good enough. I mean, I we're going to talk about yeah. Chicago and Messiah, I'm sure, but and whether anybody whether anybody can beat them, but. You know, just go out there and do like your best, and but there, um, there is something to be right. Like, and I see this in club soccer countless times. And I, it's fortunately this is not a club soccer all things club soccer channel. Um, but you see that even with kids, right? Like, what the expectation is is the win. It's not the a hey, the joy the. The journey of becoming a better soccer player. It's none of those things. It's always yeah. about, okay, uh, you put in the work to win, right? And right. I, I, you know, whatever. That's what. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, and I mean, I guess the silver lining, this is also how narcissism works, is we adjust to mm-hmm. the situation. And so now the silver lining is, oh, maybe a loss is good for them and now they can regroup. I mean, they still have everything yeah. in front of them. They're still going to be a number one or number yep. two seed. Um, you know, they're still going to have their shot. So, you know, they still yeah. got a shot. And they're at still it. like, let's be realistic, right? Despite the loss, because like I said, Ohio Wesleyan in its own right, right? You're basically, conceivably, you could say that Kenyon, you know, what is whatever whatever rankings you're looking at, four, five, six you know, in the country, yeah. lost to a team that legitimately you could make a case is like also, an, I mean, definitely a, a, a national program, right? Like they might not be necessarily ranked because right. of sort of how things have shaked out for them in the early part of the season. But yeah. right? I mean, they're legitimately good. No, they... It's not like you lost a fluke game to, I don't know who in the, Wittenberg. Right. Right. No, I think this was a more, they're, you know, they're pretty, this is different than like Denison yeah. beating Kenyon last year. I mean, oh, Wu has, hadn't, had not given up a goal until yeah. yesterday since like September yeah. 17th, except for like a, you know, they beat Hiram seven yeah. to one. So they gave up a goal at Hiram, but otherwise they hadn't given up a goal. I think since they played John Carroll um, and they're, they're going to be, I mean, they, the two could play again. 
Um, but yeah, Owu will definitely. I mean, I, th- I think people forget. Like, I think it was 2019. They knocked out yeah. Chicago um, in like the round yeah. of 32. So, you know, and when you've got one of the best coaches that's ever done it, and you've got good talent, I mean, that's yeah, a good yeah. recipe. And and it just takes, especially going into the tournament. You know, you, it's that bounce, right? Do you get that bounce, right? And at some point, I, I'm a, I look at the odds, right? At some point, Kenyon is going to hit it, right? Like, you know, at some point, Kenyon, it's all going to align almost like Connecticut last year, right? Like, it just sort of all aligned for them yeah. as they went down this journey. And at some point, Kenyon's going to get it because they can't go 0 for 10, 12, 14. It's just the odds. I just don't work that way. But I do think almost to sc- circling back, right? Like they do need a reset of sorts, right? Like, hey, this, let's just stop worrying. Let's stop worrying about the 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 tournament game. Let's stop worrying about winning an action. Let's stop worrying about what are we going to let's just concentrate on today. What are we doing today, right? And what are we doing? Who are we playing? You are right? Like it just and, and just get yeah. back to the basics. And I think, cause they, that's what last year reminded me of. Like they played so well at times. You're like, man, you could just, you got this sense. Like they were, Hey, this is, they were free flowing it. It was feeling really good. They were connecting this year at times. They just look, I don't know, just not that way. And so, man. all right. So what's next, Mr. Petru? I don't know. Is that is that what you? Yes, that was my that was, that was one, my thing. <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> and the podcast. Those were the two things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think before um, before we lose all of our audience, we should jump right into the uh, sure. Cool C discussion. All right. I'm going to pull that up. All right. Yeah. Tell me if you can see it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't need to talk about yeah. pool B, which everyone is agreed is, uh, yeah. UW, you Claire can, uh, but by the way, congratulations to them. Also huge shout outs to, um, it looks like they probably will be out Western Connecticut, uh, Johnson and Wales yeah. had a great season and got knocked out by St. Yeah. Joseph's Connecticut, which is, that's gotta be one of the biggest things that's happened to St. Jo- I didn't even know there was a St. Joseph's yeah. Connecticut. I didn't know that either. <laughs> um, and then I think you have some favorites down in your yeah. corridor, like, um, Widener and, um, yeah, but. Anyway, this is yeah. always the always the time of the year. It's a nice job, and we'll yeah. see you next year. <laughs> you know the the funny the funny thing so that, is this is the part that, and I get it right. Some of this has to be formulaic, right? You can't with so many teams and so much going on. Like this is the part where I would love for schools that do whatever they do in their conference, right? Like so. Uh, I, I go back to the one we talked about earlier, like Milwaukee, Milwaukee School of Engineering, right? They go, right? Like yep. they, they crack it out for the season, do whatever they do. They win. I don't even know what their final record is, 17 or 16, two and so, whatever it is, right? I, it's almost like it's a shame that they're not rewarded for that because the way they look at, oh, you got strength of schedule, you got all these different things. And I, I, I think you have to, there's got to be a way in which teams like that get get awarded the automatic qualifier outside or the qualifier outside of having to win their conference tournament, right? I just, I just don't, no. I don't like that. So, but that's a personal thing. No, I, I think, I mean, the, the fact that Western Connecticut most likely is not going to be in the tournament is like yeah. really hard. Just, I mean, 20, Oh, and two, are you exactly. kidding me? Like, right. Like why wouldn't you, regardless, regardless of the, who they play and their competition and all. 
like why why wouldn't you recognize that and what's the what's the biggest thing it's a golden ticket to the yeah. tournament and if they don't win in the t it doesn't matter that's i i just think why but, can't why why don't we recognize that or why doesn't the ncaa the folks who pick that stuff recognize yeah. that sort of achievement because it is regardless they still do the same things they have to do like a you know case western or fnm or gustavus adolphus right they do right. that same thing they day in and day out and they win and they win and they win i just don't well and they and they did play some teams. some good teams and like i mean I mean, they still haven't yeah. lost. No, that yeah, it's mean, like <laughs> yeah, that's hard to do. I mean, how how are you out yeah, when you've lost. never yeah. lost? That's hard to do, right? Like just w consistently yeah. winning. So I, I I don't know. Um, this one, by the way, so the the, the pool C isn't so so set, right? Like there is. I think there's probably like 25, 26 teams vying for 20 spots, right? Like, I think that's the number I roughly got. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, in my list, we're going to mm -hmm. get to, I think I have a few that are, you know, yeah. Yeah. probably pretty yeah. unlikely, but I wanted to make sure we didn't skip yeah. anybody. But so I, in the, um, in the service of not having this be a three-hour show, I, <laughs> I broke it down into the teams I don't think we need to yeah. talk about much that are seem like for me or like locks or highly yeah. locks. Now, if, is it possible that one of these won't get a bid and we'll be surprised? Yeah. Sure. Um, but is that list yeah, yeah. up there? So yeah. I, yeah, so I, I think quickly, you know, Bowdoin, Case Western, Cortland, f &M, Gustavus, Kenyon, Middlebury, Montclair, uh, North Park, NYU, Ohio Northern, and then the loser of CNU, Mary Washington. I think those teams are all yeah. safe to extremely yeah. safe. Um, and then we have, you know, later today, we've got a few that could impact how many spots mm -hmm. are left with – you know, Amherst, I think Amherst, Hopkins, and St. Lawrence, if they lost today or they lose in PKs. Yeah. They get. They, I think they, they would take. Would take spot. Absolutely. They would take three yeah. spots. And then I think St. Thomas, St. Thomas, if they lose to Trinity, is right yeah. there. Then it might be either Pack Lutheran and St. Thomas or maybe yeah. both of them. But, it, you know. Um, so the, the ones I you know, you see debated on the board a lot and um, are the, the, all the ones I list yeah. under that. The, so presuming there's eight spots, um, I added Brockport, even though nobody else is talking about them because they weren't ranked. So that's a big yeah. negative for them as they weren't regionally ranked yeah. last week, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be. They couldn't pop on there. In yeah. week four and, and, when you look at their resume, it's, I think it's very competitive mm -hmm. with some of the other bubble yeah. teams. Um, and they, you know, if the committee gets into ranking where your rank wins better than some other teams, I mean, they beat, you know, they have wins over Oneana and yeah. Cortland. So those are sort of two big ticket wins. So I, I personally, I doubt they'll get it since they weren't even in that mix last week, but I I wouldn't be surprised. Again, this is – People are writing off uh, Carnegie Mellon. I don't know if that's yeah. accurate or not. I, I'll say this about uh, about um, Rockport. The, yeah. The, if this, they're a team to me that if, if you just look at numerically, like if you just formula – you make a formula – they, they get in because of the two wins that they had, Cortland and Oneonta. Yeah. And then Oneonta winning it, obviously. Like, that's a big – that says a lot. And I, and I think they, they yeah. get in. Carnegie Mellon, I'm not, I'm, not too, I'm not too sure of. They don't. Right. Did the um, – now I can't remember. Did Oneonta, Brockport yeah. 
go to PKs, to PKs or... and then Oneonta ended up winning. Yeah, yeah. That's, so a that, tie, that's you know. So they right? isn't it? Don't they? Yeah. So they beat they beat on Oneonta once I, and also yeah, tied yeah. him. So yeah. that's why I say, like, to me, of the of, so, of between them, Carnegie Mellon, and I'll even say Catholic, like Brockport makes a very legitimate case for getting one of the spots. Yeah. Um, so Carnegie Mellon, they actually have one of the better records when you look mm-hmm. at this whole group we're going to look at, but and they have a good strength of schedule. They only have the one rank win. <clears throat> that may end up being a question of, you know, will the committee go deeper yeah. than – uh, Case Western and Ohio Northern and in the, in the what used to be yeah. the Great Lakes uh, region. Um, Catholic, I think, has a very. I wasn't sure till I looked at everything, but I think Catholic has a very good chance to get in. I think that's record wise. I don't. I don't um, think against. I think their record against the ranked opponents is kind of eh, right. Like. Let's one, one, two. one, yeah. one, and two. So they don't have anything outstanding, no. but there's nothing. To shoot, I'm in the foot. Yeah, really yeah. weak agreed, either. Agreed. Um, and then I threw in Connecticut just because they're still playing. I think if they, it may not help. I mean, I think they may end up getting ranked in the last ranking, which will help a couple of yeah. teams, other teams. Um. But they're going to have one of the highest strength of schedules. Yeah. Um, right now, I've got them with RVR of two, three, and yeah. five. I think the seven, five, and five as a record is probably. T- and if they lose today, that could be two, six, yeah. and five. <clears throat> so I, I don't see them getting in, but um, I know the committee when they see those SOSs yeah. above six hundred, yeah. you know. Um, I think most people had drew out, um, you know, they're, they don't look that much different than Catholic on paper. Um, Indicott, I don't think is going to get in, but I think they do benefit from appearing number two in that region. region. So, um, you know, is the committee not going to even take a single team from that whole region since Babson, Babson got it, an yeah. AQ? Um, and then, you know, I just didn't make official my prediction picks on these because I just think they're, you know, then you get into Hamilton, Lynchburg. Um, let's skip Pack Lutheran because I think they go with St. Thomas, but, you know, uh, yeah. You know, Vassar, those are all so close. Yeah. Um, Skidmore, yeah. I don't, I people, I know the Liberty League folks are just beside themselves about all this stuff, <laughs> but I, if Skidmore doesn't win today, I, I don't, don't see, see them a, getting I don't in. Think they have a chance. They have to win today. Like, if they're yeah. going to, yeah, I don't, I, they're one that I would just be like, nope, they don't make it. Yeah. And with all the complaints about the ties, which I definitely get that, but I I think Tufts and Williams are probably in, um, because they th- none of these teams have a lot of rank wins. So when you see a team that has two rank wins and a high o- yeah. SOS, um, <clears throat> plus Tufts and Williams are already ahead of Hamilton yeah, in the ranking in the rankings and Hamilton hasn't yeah. played so it's hard to see how Hamilton would jump either yeah. of them you know so then maybe you get into Hamilton versus Vassar I can see um, that yeah that yeah um I don't know did what any of, and then I know people have written off uh Platteville but uh-huh. I based on the numbers I think they're yeah. right in there I actually looked at this and I thought the two most interesting ones for me that I was like, huh, that's an, the, like I could tot I told, well, three, right? And we talked about one of them already. It was the, is Platteville. I'm like, again, there's yeah. a team that's been taking care of business throughout the season, right? And yeah, yeah, but there are four losses come against, four ranked teams, which is not too shabby, 
right? Like, you know, that's to be expected. They didn't lose to anyone they're not supposed to lose to. The other... Right, and they have a respectable yeah. st- st- right. the schedule. The other one is Wartburg. I, I, I kind of like that. I like Wartburg, and I could, you know... Again, same same thing. They they did what they had to do. They again, they're. Uh, I look at the ties and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's a that's a bit. But uh, kind of like the Williams scenario, right? Not as strong of the strength of schedule, but look, Williams is two zero and six against ranked opponents, and Wartburg's two one and four, right? That's no that's a lot that's a lot closer yeah, yeah you're right that's a lot closer than yeah. people would and think. and then the other one again is just western connecticut that if they don't get a bid i think it's kind of criminal but again just because of their record yeah i don't think and what they did like so yeah but i totally understand it do you take you look at this and you're like if you had one spot left do you take western connecticut or do you take you look at you know, okay, just Vassar, like, you know, like you just look at them, right? Look right. at their strength of schedule or whatever record, you know? Well, it's interesting that you just pulled that out of the hat because Western Connecticut actually yeah. beat Vassar. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so, first, first game, first game right. of the right. season. Yeah, I forgot about that. But, you know. Um, so. Well, let me let me ask you about this one because I think this is another interesting one because it was very similar from them last year and I think they got left out as Lynchburg. Yeah, I could. That's another like you know you look. I I, I would say Lynchburg make should make it. Like if I'm if I'm picking out the the ten, the eight the eight spots. I'm picking those out. Yeah. Just assuming everybody loses here, like loses their turn. So Connecticut College, they're they're an option. I would say I would go. Let's let's see if I do the count right. Brockport. I would probably go between. I, I could legitimately make a case for Catholic and for Drew. Lynchburg. I would go with Pacific Lutheran. I would go with Trinity. I would go with, I, I would actually go with Vassar and then I would go with Western Connecticut because my heart strings on the Western Connecticut. And I would skip out on Tufts. I would, um, yeah. That's so that that would be the route I would go. You'd skip you'd, you'd skip Tufts yeah, and Williams. Yeah. It sounds like, and and that so that must mean you'd skip Hamilton Correct. too. Correct. Um. Yeah, I think Tufts and Williams will probably get in, but yeah, like Western Connecticut. When, like, I I really think Pack Lutheran yeah. should get in. I mean, seventeen yeah. and three. They have they have big challenges yeah. to you know. Um, but once you look at Pack Lutheran at seventeen and three, and their SOS is not you that got, much, you, you, it's not that much better than yeah. Western you have to go with Western Connecticut if that's your rationale for Pacific Lutheran. <laughs> then hey, Western Connecticut is in you too, might. right? But whoever said well, especially because if if Whitman stays ranked, then Pack Lutheran also has three also, ranked yeah. losses and just one ranked yeah. win. But I, I mean, I I feel like Pack Lutheran should get in, so it's. That's tough. Um, Lynchburg, I had the same feeling you did. Like my gut tells me Lynchburg should be in, but when you when you put if you put these all these numbers, yeah. you know, and oh, I should have a disclaimer: these numbers are not exact. Because on the SOS, I had to kind of yeah, yeah, guess yeah. based on the last week. Um, but if you put all these numbers anonymously, I, like I don't know how people would like, yeah. There's got to be people far smarter than you and I to like. I mean, uh, that's why I didn't even try to pick like an exact. And you know, and that's not even that's not even dealing with uh, Amherst, hmm. Hopkins, and St. Yeah. Lawrence if they lose. Well, that's that that those three to me put a whole wrench in that. Right? Like, so it's like, come on, they should win. Right. <laughs> you know, like, come on, win, win. You know, exactly. like, otherwise this goes out the window. Right, but if 
if at least one of them doesn't win, you wouldn't yeah. be shocked, yeah, though. Yeah. By the way, who are you picking in Amherst Con College today? I, you know, I I'll say it. I know. I know one of the guys on the boards love him dearly. His aunt, son, uh, it, Amherst. He's an Amherst guy, and uh, uh, and I'm sure I I would qualify. Not so maybe an Am hater, but maybe not. Um, <clears throat> I just find I just again maybe it's my recollection of last year, and that's a ter- that's a terrible thing to compare, but. I'm underwhelmed by both teams, and I, I'm actually I, I'm actually going to go with I think Amherst pulls it off, and I think Amherst wins, and I think they win uh, two two goal differential. You know, I just think they're going to be up, and no. I'm not sure Connecticut has ever demonstrated being up like like just totally fired up for a game this year i don't know i just it's just a feeling i get there's no science to it uh, I, connecticut's also i think pretty banged yeah. up so uh, yeah they don't uh, so what, what about um speaking of fathers on the board um like you know, nobody would ever concede that their team isn't better than some yeah. other team. But what um, what do you think about Middlebury's uh, chances? Who who's in the who are they playing? Oh, and to get in? To, uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm assuming Middlebury's in, but just like oh. in the you know yeah, compared yeah, yeah. to like, do you rate them ahead of Amherst or even or? I I think they're better. I and t- this year today I would say that they're a better team than Amherst. I like them better. Mm-hmm. I think they I think they look more composed. There there are certain things they look more composed, they look more organized, they look more of like an I they have an idea as to what they want to do. Sometimes I look at Amherst and I don't see mm-hmm. that at all. This year in particular. This year in particular. And and then I also see I and also then, see Amherst making mistakes in the back. I, I I see mistakes happening that that I don't I'm surprised that they make, right? That that ends up happening, leads to goals mm-hmm. and whatnot, which they never again, terrible to compare year over year, but last year they would have never conceded some of the goals they conceded. And and I will say this, and I, it's terrible. It's terrible of me, and I'm not. It's not a personal thing. Like, and and the first place I would start is with their goalkeeper. I think mm-hmm. I think I think I think he's a liability. There, I said it. I'm gonna go start preparing for the hate <laughs> mail. <laughs> the um. And then, of course, because they didn't play this week, like nobody's even talking about Bowden yeah. anymore. But I, I, I actually, you're so you're a little down on Amherst. I, I, I think those are three teams that, I mean, they wouldn't be favored, obviously, but I think those are three teams that could give Messiah, oh, just style wise, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That I don't, I don't disagree. My. This is this is now shifting over my thinking about Messiah in particular because Chicago has had some close games where I was like, "Ooh, this this might be the one," right where they where they break. I have yet to see Messiah play a game where I thought they were not going to win. Like even the close game, um, what's the, who parked the bus on them where they basically got a goal. <laughs> Put a um, ten guys on the on the um, is it Lebanon Valley Lebanon Lebanon Valley yeah LVC was it uh, that sounds um, yeah because they got a goal and then but, it was very yeah, recent it was yeah, just a week yeah, or yeah. two ago and and so I I just um, I, I don't see a team that would stop them I I think 
a Messiah like team. Yeah, Bowden, Middlebury. Like those are teams that I could see like could sh could surprise yeah. them just because of their physicality and how go 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 they are. But I will even say that that well, could and be I hard think they, for them. So. I think they yeah, I think those teams can keep the game yeah. close and and Messiah I mean Messiah is never going to panic right. cuz they're too confident. Um but yeah, I mean should you know, in that in, in kind of a one zero game, maybe you trust Chicago a little bit more. Because they're so yes. used to it. Yes. And they're they, they I will say they do what Messiah sometimes doesn't, which is they lock down. Like when they lock down, they lock down. Like you're not getting close to their goal. Like it's just amazing to me. Yeah. Right. Um the, the two center backs just basically are uh, together. They're a wall. Like you're not getting around those guys. Right. And, and so, yeah, I could totally see, even, again, if you put a matchup Messiah Chicago, I could see Chicago getting a goal and then Messiah not even coming close to getting a goal. Like I could totally, I could totally see that, but I will say, right. I just yeah, I, watched. Yes. I don't know if you watched yesterday. I, I logged in 15 minutes late and it was already like two or three, nothing. I was like, Oh, Holy mackerel. And you thought, hey, Widener, here's a team. They're going to give them a game. Like, they got it all going for them. And they just, I hate to say it, looked pedestrian. And Messiah was, like, licking chops over, you know, how they could pad the stats. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think once all of our own personal favorites yeah. lose, <laughs> I mean, I think most neutral. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we all are very curious to see Messiah in yeah. Chicago. Um, but I, I also waited several years for Messiah and Tufts to play yeah, and they, it yeah, never worked yeah. out. So, yeah, I don't know, know how the tournament's going to, I mean, that's going to be, to me, it's what's going to, is even more in the next interesting conversation we should have is just like, okay, who gets lined up where and who, and who plays who, because I think that's going to be. Right. We should do it. We should do another, uh, yeah. short show after the brackets yeah, yeah, come definitely. out. Cause that's uh, that's that'll be interesting, and then just seeing the path of some of these guys. Um, so, all right. So, what else? What um, else you got? Well, I was gonna ask. I got one okay. more for you. Just a. Uh, we may have already covered it, but um, you know who who is sort of your like dark horse picks for. Not not to make the whether they're going to make the tournament, but like actually in the tournament. Dark horse picks who are going to get into the tournament or are actually going to go far in the tournament. No, that are like you know in the like like I'll I'll start off and then you can I my do you, do you have a couple for me are uh, Case Western and John yeah. Carroll and. I don't think either one of them can get to the final four probably or win the national mm -hmm. title, but I think they can knock somebody yeah. else out. Um, so I, I think they both could get definitely get to the second weekend. I, I think another team in um, Ohio, Ohio Northern could do the very same. Like I don't I don't see them having they, yeah having, all I, I they might go into the you know round of sixteen or what have you, but. And, but I I think they they could take out a, a a big dog. I think they have that capability. Right. Um. Um. I keep waiting for North Park. Any others? I keep, I'm telling you, I I know. I keep waiting for North Park to 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 tune it in and go and and be as good as I think they can be. I just wonder again. Another team. I mean, that's another topic for another conversation. Is how many teams that at the beginning of the season we were like these guys are good these guys are super good and then just sort of wavered throughout the year where you could never i mean case in point connecticut right like what happened just, you know right so no th those first few weeks i said messiah chicago and yeah. north park were all like a group yeah together um and i i didn't i didn't watch enough of the game yesterday to really comment it looked like it got extremely uh chippy and even a little bit ugly but i mean 
What about North Central? I mean, they're still undefeated. That's another one. I, I don't. I don't know if they have. But right. I don't know if they'll again. They'll they'll get in. I think they do have the capacity to really sort of take out a, a, a big dog or surprise somebody. I just don't see them having. Oh, well, you know what? I can see them getting to again. Depends on how what their path ends up being, but. You know, I right. could see them getting to the, you know, Elite Eight or, you know, the, uh, I could totally see that. Yeah, they're another yeah. one. A fascinating, yeah. uh, a second round like North Central versus Calvin would be like. Oh, totally. I would like that. I, and I'm a big fan. Of, there's another one. Calvin, I think, can really do damage to teams yeah. if you're not. If you're not careful, I think they, I think they have talent, and and I, they're another one I think could go pretty far. I think, yeah, Cal, Calvin's one of those teams that people forget yeah. about for about six yeah. weeks because they're in their yeah. conference that <laughs> yeah. killing everybody. Yeah. And, well, they just beat. I mean, um, I mean, there's another team. Hope I thought would be better than, and I don't know if the coaching stuff happened that made it really difficult for them, but. Um, I was expecting, I've been expecting more out of them, but they just rolled over hope was it three, nothing yesterday. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. but I do like, I do think Calvin is, is another one of those. Um, I'm trying to think who else looking at, your um, list. I'm one, uh, well, we got, Oh, woo, that we just talked about being yeah. hot. Um, St. Olaf um, is sort of coming on. What about Rowan? Rowan just manhandled. Beat, um, I didn't watch the game, but it looks like they beat Montclair that, that pretty handily. That was a good old-fashioned, you know, war between two rival, you know, mafia gangs, in, you know, in Newark and Hoboken, yeah. just gunning each other down. Like, that was a good old the, – they're no. – I just I wonder about their consistency. Like I, I just I, that's the yeah well, that's my only thing. Yeah, both both of those teams have a very and they could get matched up with one of the yeah. NESCAC. Like those teams ha seem to have a very hard time with like Tufts, yeah, yeah. Amherst, Middlebury, because yeah. those teams are so yeah. disciplined. And those and, and that's the that's a good word because that's the thing I never thought both. Rowan and, and Montclair don't strike me as terribly disciplined teams that they just go at it and there's they're... no they, they could get like a red card in the first 15 <laughs> minutes and you know so um so you want to wrap this up and then like do like a half hour like after... oh absolutely yeah let's do that we we can't yeah. stop now next Tuesday or Wednesday we have plenty or... of fans that are just that are dying for you know episodes of the new show not because of me but you know you're yeah. people are emailing me about getting like you know eight by ten glossy photos of you autographed like you know those headshots that you see famous people do you know like hey right so we might have to open up a shop selling your autograph um yeah, no, yeah. this was this was great. We'll do we'll definitely do another one when the brackets come out, and if we have to, we'll do a um, we could do it early in the morning again, just so that we get a uh, a head start. And I'll get this out today before yeah. things settle, the, before okay. the dust settles, and 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 uh, yeah, maybe no, I don't think we said anything that would make us look bad, like all the teams we pick lose, or you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is yeah. great. Uh, Mr. Petru. All right, so yep, we'll this is great. Uh, and I'll yep. see you on the boards. Okay. All right, hang on. Don't so say, long. hang on, let me stop. Yep. Yeah.